What is going on everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to the fourth episode in the New Beginner Java Game Programming Tutorial Series. In this tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about the structure of our game and how our game is going to work. Then we're going to begin implementing a few of the things that we talk about today. Now the first thing that we're going to talk about is threads. Now what is a thread? Before I get started here, I want to point out that I am not going to give you guys a technical definition of what a thread is and what it does. I'm just going to give, for those people who don't know what a thread is, the basic understanding of what they need to know what a thread is and what it does for our purposes. I am not giving you an actual technical explanation of a thread. If you want to learn that, you can learn that on your own. There are many articles online about it. So real quickly, what is a thread for our purposes? Well, whenever you run a Java application, like whenever we start our game here with our launcher class, it creates a big program for all of the code to run in. Now, that's great, but we want our game class to run on its own mini program, and that's what a thread is. A thread is a mini program. So we have our big program that starts, and then whenever we create this game class, if we put it on a new thread, it's going to run on its own mini program within the big program. It's going to run completely separately, though. So essentially, our program's going to run, we're going to have a big space for all of our program code, then we're going to create this game class on a new thread, so now, everything in this game class is going to run separately from all the rest of the code in our application. I hope that made a little bit of sense. If it didn't, you'll grasp the hang of it soon, if not in this tutorial, in the future tutorials that I have when we begin working with threads again. So a thread essentially allows us to run a class uh, separately from the rest of our program, and this can help with efficiency later on. So, how do we create a thread? First things first, we need to allow this game class to run on a thread. And in order to do that, we have to implement runnable. And that will allow it to run on a thread. Now, whenever you implement runnable on a class, it'll give you an error. And that's because whenever you implement runnable, you must have a public void run method at the bottom or inside of your class. You must have a public void run method whenever you implement runnable. And we'll get back to that later. Next, we actually have to have a thread that we can run on. So we're going to create a private thread called thread. And we're going to initialize that by two methods. We're going to create two methods down here, and they're going to be called start and stop. They're going to be public synchronized, and I'm going to explain this word in just a few. It's going to be a void, and we'll name this method stop, and let me spell that correctly. Public synchronized void start, and then we're going to have the same thing for stop. So these methods will start up our thread and stop our thread. Whenever we're starting a thread, we have to initialize it first, so thread equals a new thread. Oh, and I forgot the synchronized word right here. Synchronized, you basically only use that whenever you're working with threads directly. So whenever we're starting or stopping a thread, for instance, we want to use the synchronized keyword, that way nothing gets messed up in the process. Alright, so in this start method, we want to set initialize the thread, thread equals a new thread, and then the thread constructor takes in what class you want to run. We want to run this game class because it implements runnable, so it'll allow us to pass in this game class. So that will run the game class on the thread, but we actually have to start the thread, so thread.start. This will start up our thread, and thread.start will actually call this run method right here. So thread.start will call this run method, and this run method is where a majority of our game code is actually going to go. All right. That should do it for the start method for now. Now in the stop method, we actually want to stop our thread safely, so we want to do thread.join. And th Eclipse will give us an error, and that's because it needs to be surrounded with a try-catch statement. There we go. So, really, really quick recap, just to go over it one more time. Our game implements runnable, which allows it to be run on a thread. We have a thread object here. Whenever we call the start method, we initialize the, the thread to a new thread, and we take in this class, because we want to run this class on a new thread. We start up the thread, which will in turn run this run method right here. And then the stop method will close down our thread properly. Alright, now this run method, the first thing we want to do in the run method is we want to call a method called init. And we actually have to create that method up here, private, whoop, private void init. This method is only going to be run once, so whenever this run method runs, it'll call the init method right here. And this is going to initialize all the graphics of our game. It'll get things ready for our game. Then we're going to want to run the game loop of our game. I have a quick diagram here. It's not the best diagram, but let me go over it real quickly. It's called the game loop. The game loop runs over and over and over again in almost any game that you've ever played. The first thing that happens is 
it updates all the variables in all the positions of objects like the position of your player everything it updates everything right here then it moves on to rendering stuff it renders or draws everything to the screen so you can see the current scene of the game then it loops all the way back to the start updates all the variables and the posi positions of things renders it again and then goes back to the start and it does this over and over and over again many 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 times throughout the game that's called the game loop so we update everything then we draw everything to the screen over and over again so how do we get something to run over and over again in Java? Well, we use a while loop, obviously. So while something is true, do whatever code is in here. And we want to update everything and render. So below this init method, we're going to create two new methods, one called private void tick. You can also name this update, and this will update everything for our game. And then we need a private void render, and that will render everything for our game. So in this while loop, we want to tick, and then we want to render. And that'll do everything over and over and over again. Now, while true isn't a good loop, we want some variable. That way we control whether this loop runs or not. So up here, we're going to create a private boolean variable called running. And we're going to set that equal to false to start. And in this while loop, instead of while true, we're going to do while running. So while the running variable is true, we want to keep ticking and rendering over and over again. Then once running equals false, this while loop will exit, and just in case we want to call the stop method to stop our thread in case it hasn't already been stopped. Now, we set running equal to false. We have to set it equal to true somewhere. Well, down in the start method here, before we do any of this, we want to set running equal to true. Now, what if our game is already running, and this start method accidentally gets called somewhere? Well, it's just going to give us a bunch of jumbled mess because we're reinitializing the thread, and that's not good. So we want to check in this start method if we are already running, so if running equals true, if our game is already running, then return. We don't want to do any of this code down here because our game is already running. If running equals false though, we want to run all this code and set running equal to true. We're going to do the same thing in the stop method, running equals false. But if for some reason our program or our game is already stopped, we don't want to stop it again because that'll cause a bunch of errors. So if we are not running, if running equals false, whoops, I messed that up. If we are not running, if running equals false, we just want to return and don't do any of the code below here. So that's just acting like a safety in case. All right, that should just about do it. And we're actually going to move this display equals new display into the initialize method just so it's running on this new thread that we create. And, oh, I guess we actually have to store the title. So, public string title, and we're just going to set that in the constructor. This dot title equals title. Sorry, I got a new keyboard and I'm not used to typing on it. So, there we go. Now, we changed quite a bit in this tutorial series. Once again, I know this might be painful to some of you, but I feel that I have to go over it real quickly one more time, just in case you missed a part or don't understand a part. So I already went over the thread stuff. Let's go over what we just did. So, we just changed in the constructor to take in, or to store the title variable in a variable named title up here. That way we can access it in the init method and initialize the display. Now, whenever we call this start method right here, we check if the game is already running. If it's already running, don't do any of this code because, well, we're already running. If it's not running, set running equal to true, and then initialize our thread to this class and start it up, which we'll call this run method. The run method will call the init method up here, which will initialize everything like our display now, and it'll also initialize everything like our images and everything later on. Then, as long as running equals true, we want to keep ticking and rendering over and over again. These two methods right here, update everything and render everything to the screen. Then, after our while loop, once running equals false, we want to call the stop method just in case it didn't stop the first time. And the stop method here will check if we're already stopped, don't do any of this below code, but if we are still running, then set running equal to false and close the thread safely. I hope that made sense to everyone. We did quite a bit in this tutorial. It may be a little bit confusing to some people because we're working with threads, but trust me, you'll get the hang of it later on. We just created the main framework of our game. The init method, the tick and render method, and our game loop. Now, of course, we're going to do optimizations to all of these methods later on, but for right now, we are good. In the next tutorial, we should hopefully begin rend our render method and hopefully get something drawn to the screen. That'll be really exciting. 
Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next tutorial.